Hi everyone, this is Sharan here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to show how to create a personal portfolio website. You need not have a, too much of a technical background, a simple HTML as well as CSS knowledge, if you have, could be very helpful. But if you don't have any background about the web design, that's absolutely all right. The, the tools that we are going to use today, it's going to be very, very simple. You need not have much programming knowledge about HTML or about JavaScript or any anything that uh, for that matter. So first, before going into the tutorial, why do you need to create a portfolio uh, for yourself? So if you have, if you are interested in pursuing a career in data science, it's always good for you to like showcase your projects, showcase your uh, work on a digital resume. So when I say digital resume and resume that is av av available online, so if you have a personal portfolio for yourself where you have details about yourself, the project that you have worked on, the various other contributions that you have made uh, in your career, so it will be very useful. It could be very helpful for you to attract potential recruiters. Also, if you have an idea about doing a freelancing kind of work, maybe sometime down in the future, having a portfolio website for yourself will be very helpful in order to gain uh, audience or in order to gain customers for your work. So whatever you are doing, like whatever stage you may be at the moment, like you might be learning or you could already be into a career in data science. So no matter whatever be your stage, it is the right time for you to create a personal portfolio for yourself to showcase about your skills as well as the project and work that you are doing. So now, Let's get into and see how to create a personal portfolio for yourself for free. So here, what we are going to do is we are going to use GitHub pages. GitHub as a functionality, like both for individual as well as for organization to make use of their repository and use those repository as a hosting service to publish your websites. So what we are going to do is we are going to use that uh, functionality of GitHub, the GitHub pages, and we are going to see how to create a page for yourself and how to make modification, how to make it look more professional. So first, the first one is, as you see on my screen, the first what we need to do is we need to create a uh, repository for yourself. So, so this is how your GitHub page might look like. So you need to go into repositories. And after going into the repository, you need to click on the new button here. So what you need to do is you need to create an, uh, so when you want to create a portfolio website for yourself, it needs to be in a specific format. So here in this case, like my username is R. Sharan Kumar. So what I need to do is I need to create, uh, I need to use the same username, R. Sharan Kumar, and then I need to use .gitup.io. So this, should be the format for the data page. So it, you can see that there is a message that is coming up that this page has already been created. It is because like my portfolio website has already been created and uh, the, uh, and hence I can't, I can't recreate uh, or re reuse the same name. So now once you, once you drip the name and then you need to come down, no need to check on any of these boxes. All you need to do is you need to maybe give a one line description saying that this is your personal portfolio website and you need to ensure that the, it is public so that, that your website can be accessed by anyone. And once you have given it, you need to click on the create repository button so that the repository would be created. So first step is to create the uh, repository where you can host your website the, uh, or you can publish your website. So after creating the GitHub repository, what you need to do is you need to get a good template that can be used for you to publish your website. There are a number of websites which publishes various templates for free. So one such website is called as HTML5. So as you see on my screen here, so HTML5, so this particular website offers a number of free templates. So depending upon your requirement, you can browse through various templates, pick up and use, pick up and template that matches your requirement. So if you see here, like it has various templates, it, they have live demo functionality as well. So if you click on live demo, you can see how that website would work. Uh, so what I have done is for my requirement, I found the dimension uh, templates was very apt. 
so i also uh, saw the, the live demo of their website right it was quite good i thought like it could be something that might match my uh, interest as well as it could match my requirement as well so i saw like i, I was browsing through the functionalities here it was looking quite good so what i did was i have downloaded this particular template so you need to you need to browse through the various templates that are available uh, here and then you can download the template that matches your requirement once you download the template the next step is we need to do the required modification so as you see on my screen the template would have been downloaded into your folder so it would appear like this there are very few files you need not worry about a lot of uh, files here uh, all you need to do is you need to worry about the head index.html so this will be the main page which we would be modifying and all all the images that you are going to use in this particular website can be stored in the folder mentioned as images and you need not make any modification to asserts so asserts would be the folder which would contain the css and javascript file no need to touch the particular file let it be as it is because the template that we are going to use is already been formatted and it is looking perfectly fine for us so it requires very minimal changes if you have a good knowledge about javascript or css maybe you can go and then make those changes but if you are not interested in making any changes you can just ignore it and you can just focus on the ht uh, index.html so this will be the only page where we will be doing the modification let me open and show you like how it appears So this is how the HTML uh, script is looking. So what we need to do is we need to make changes to it. For example, like I find that the name dimension here. So I want to replace dimension with my name. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go here and then look for the dimension and then I'm going to replace it with Sharon. And what I'm going to do is just below dimension. So here you can see there is a simple explanation about what this design is. What I want to do is I want to provide a brief introduction about myself, like what I am doing, what is my experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to edit this particular content here, and then I'm going to edit this with my details. And as you come down here, we can see for introduction. Uh, so here in this side, if I click on the introduction button, there is an uh, image as well as a short introduction about uh, about this particular page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. So here, so this is the part where the script for the code for introduction appears. I'm going to replace this with my introduction. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the image as well. So the image that when you download, what happens is the images that you see here online might not be available because all these images are being downloaded or reused from Unsplash. So, uh, so some of those images might not be available when you download this particular template. So it doesn't matter. You can go, go to, to the uh, Unsplash website and then see some good images, pick some good images. If you have your own images, you can make use of those images as well. So the idea here is uh, what we are going to do is we are going to make the modifications to the template. So as you see, we are not going to do any technical modifications. The modification that we are going to do is very, very simple. We are just going to change the content, maybe edit the link uh, to where the, those uh, clicks might be getting us to. In some cases, for example, if I click on intro, it, it, would, it says that it would take me to this particular part here. So if I want uh, want like me to take it to a third party website, for example, let's say instead of work, I want to provide my LinkedIn profile here. So what I can do is instead of a hash work, what I can do is I can provide the profile, the link to my profile. Uh, so by that way, what would happen is when I click on work, it would take me to the LinkedIn profile. So people who visit my website can get to my LinkedIn profile directly from my website. So the purpose here is we are going to make all these modifications. The modifications might not take much time. So depending upon your uh, your level of expertise or your level of comfort in making modifications to these HTML, it's actually very, very simple uh, because like we are not going to touch any technical part. We are going to just edit the contents and then we are going to replace or uh, uh, edit with the most relevant content. So you, you can see there are links to the uh, social profile like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and GitHub. And you can see the, 
like HR reference is uh, not specified, what you can do is you can specify or provide link to your own profile so that when we click on those buttons, what it what happens is it will take us to those uh, now it will take it will take the users to your social media or social profiles. So after making all those modifications, so then comes the contact button. So if I click on contact, what you can see is you can see a simple form. So usually what happens is when you have a website, all these contacts form requires and server because it needs server side scripting. Uh, because like whenever someone types in the message and say, clicks on the send message, like we need to have a server which would be capable enough to send those message to this designated email ID that we configure. But here in this case, what we don't, we don't have a dedicated server for ourselves. We are using GitHub and we are going to publish this as a static website. But still, we want to have a contact form because uh, even though you provide links to your social profile like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, etc., if you have a contact form, it is easy for users to contact you directly. So if there is lots of friction, uh, like if the user have has to let uh, go through the LinkedIn profile, send you a request and then contact you, it takes some a bit of time. So if there is some opportunity that is coming to you, uh, if you have a contact form readily available, it is easy, easy for those users to just directly contact you and you will not be missing out any any important opportunities. So in order to make these contact forms work, what you can do is there is a very simple solution. So there is there is a product called as Formsphere. Uh, so as you see on my screen here, what you can do is you can sign up for Formsphere, like you can sign up for free. Uh, uh, the basic functionalities are free, so it should be it should be all right for someone who is getting started. So once you sign up for Formsphere, what would what would happen is you will be given a form ID. So as you see on my screen, uh, in your script there will be a there will be a part for the contact form. So in the contact form, what you need to do is you need to make changes at two places, just two places. So the place where you see action, you need to provide this particular URL. And here, the form ID that you see here should be replaced with your form ID. So this particular part here should be replaced with your form ID. So once you sign up, you will be provided with a form ID and you need to ensure that the method is specified as post. So let me show you this in our HTML script. So in our HTML script, the, the, uh, the, the template that we have used here, so we can see this is the part which has the form. So here, this has both action as well as method. So in Formsphere, once you have signed up, the, whatever the form ID you get, copy that form ID, the complete URL, and then paste it here in action, and the method should be post. So once this is done, so then your form is in working condition, that it is good enough for anyone to make use of the form and contact you. So while signing up in Formsphere, you would you will be signing up with an uh, with an email ID. So whatever is email ID configurations that you specify while creating an account in Formsphere, like those configurations will be used here. So the email ID that you have specified uh, to that email ID, you will be receiving all these messages. So now we have modified the template. We have the contact form working. So it's all great now. So what we need to do is we have the repository created, but we haven't done any, any changes to it. So now what, I have, what we should do is, all the scripts, all the changes that we have done should be all in our folder. So then we have to we have to use like if you are using Mat, you can use terminal, or if you are using Linux, you can make use of shell, or if you are using Windows, you can use uh, something like a Git Bash. Uh, and using Git Bash, what you need to do is you need to go to the folder which has all your website related scripts. So in my case, what happens is uh, so. So this is the folder that we have downloaded. I have modified the index.html and I have modified uh, with my own images. And after doing all those modifications, then what I do is I go into this particular folder uh, using using terminal or using did bash, whatever it may be. And for the first time, what we need to do is we need to add the remote repository that we have just created. So the remote repository that you have created would look something like this that you see on my screen here. So it will have uh, uh, dw.com your username and you would have username your username dot dw dot io dot git. So what you need to do is you need to use this command. And so this command needs to be used only for the first time. So we are going to add the remote repository. Uh, we are going to map this folder to the remote repository. 
So once this is done, so then what we need to do is we need to use split add command in order to add or move our changes to the staging area. So after adding, we are going to commit all those changes. Whenever you are going to use commit, so this is how the command will look like. So whenever you are going to use commit, you need to uh, maybe it's, it's always a good practice to pass on and message. So you know exactly what were those changes that were committed on this on that particular version. So in future, if you want to roll back, you clearly know to which version you need to roll back to. And once you have committed all those changes, you, you're going to use a did push origin master. So here in this case, I don't have any branches. Like I'm the only user who's going to use or who's going to edit this particular uh, website. So I, I don't have any um, branches. So if it is the same scenario for you as well, you can make use of the same command. You can use a did push origin master. Maybe for the first time, it will ask you for your username as well as password, the did username as well as password. So once you provide that, what happens is whatever changes that you have made would be pushed to your Git repository. That's it. So once the code has been pushed into the Git repository, so then what happens is if you type in your username dot .io, so if you type that in your browser, you you will see your website. So uh, in addition to this, in addition to this, if you want and domain for yourself, what you can do is you can go to GoDaddy or you can go to any other website where you can buy the domains and then you can search for the domain that you're looking for. You can, you can just type in your name and then see if the domain is available. So if you see like uh, I've searched for data science and these are all the domains that are available. So once you buy and domain, so then what happens is you configure the DNS and uh, point those to the uh, data pages that we have created. I'm going to show you like my website, what I have created for myself. So this is how like this is this is what my domain is asharankumar.com. So once the user types in this particular domain, what happens is they have been taken to the data page that I have created. So this is how the, the, the template now looks like after modification. And uh, it has a brief intro about myself and it has an introduction like uh, with my profile picture about what I am doing with links to various uh, contents that I produce in YouTube as well as Medium. It has linked to my LinkedIn profile, the boots that I have authored and uh, the contact form as well. And it also has, uh, uh, like, this is an additional uh, an add-on functionality which I have created. So if uh, someone wants to subscribe to my newsletter, they can just type in their e email ID here and then subscribe. So. Uh, they would be receiving the uh, monthly uh, newsletter from myself and it has various links like uh, the boots that I have created. So if you are someone like who is starting your career in data science, what you can do is you can just put in your project uh, that you have worked on here. So you can just uh, uh, maybe create an image about your project, provide a short description about what this particular project is about and you can maybe add on a link to the Git repository where you have all those scripts saved. So by this way, if the potential recruiter or someone uh, who is interested, like maybe uh, interested in reaching out to you for any freelance kind of work would be able to see your portfolio, understand what you have done, and then they would be able to reach out to you for maybe a good opportunity. And I have also linked in some third party website, for example, here, YouTube. So if you click here, it will direct directly take you to my YouTube page. That's how I have modified it. So that's about it. So what we have uh, done is we have created an portfolio website for free, for no cost at all, like absolutely free. And it will be really good for you. Um, it, it would help you in getting a really a good opportunities. It would help you in uh, in creating a great impression in your, uh, like, uh, uh, in your next job interview. And uh, I hope this is very helpful for you. If you are able to create a personal portfolio using this particular video, please come back and provide in a comment about like how useful you find this particular video of mine. And uh, yeah, that'll be great. If you have learned something new and if you find this interesting, please click on the uh, like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you want, no, if you want to be notified about more similar videos, please enable the notification icon. So whenever I make data science related contents, it will reach you. And that's it for now. See you next time.